Hi guys, it's Zumar speaking, and today I will teach you a very important phrase in Arabic, especially if you are actually like, you know, living in the Middle East uh, right now, or you're, you're going to travel in the Middle East, and, um, and you are, you know, a taxi driver, or you are taking a taxi driver, and the uh, taxi is going fast, and you want to tell him, slow down, please, then this video is going to be useful for you. As well, um, if you are learning Arabic and uh, you know you want to like you know uh, tell your friend to slow down his speaking, this following phrase will be super useful for you. Okay, now here's the phrase. Ala mahlak. Ala mahlak. And this is for a man. And it means slow down. Ala mahlak. Now, the ayn here is a throat letter, so make sure you pronounce it correctly. Ala mahlak. Now, for a woman, I say Ala mahlak. Ala mahlak. And the difference here actually is just the ending. So, ek referred to a feminine gender. Ala mahlak. Okay? And Ak refers to a uh, male gender. Okay, so, so far you learned how to say Ala Mahlak, that's for a man, and for a woman, Ala Mahlak. So, next time if you, someone is speaking very fast in Arabic and you want to tell him or her to slow down, just say that phrase, Ala Mahlak. Or you're a, a taxi driver, which is very, very common, um, just to warn you, for some reason, like taxis in the Middle East are kind of like, you know, they think they are in rally uh, competitions. So they speed up in compared to London or to Europe. Okay, so that's why it's very important to tell the taxi driver to slow down. Okay. <laughs>
And then we are going to use these two words with the verb andi as well. So let's start. So the word in Arabic for Monday, tanin, tanin, again, tanin. Now to say on Monday, I need to change the structure a little bit. So I would say in Arabic, the day of Monday. The day of Monday. So literally, I will say, Yom al -tanin. So, Yom al -tanin on Monday. And just Monday, Tanin. Alright, now, to say in Arabic, I have work on Monday. Andi shigil Yom al -tanin. Yom al -tanin. Again, عندي شغل يوم التنين. To say, for example, I have meeting on Monday. عندي اجتماع يوم التنين. Again, عندي اجتماع يوم التنين. To say, for example, I have dinner on Monday. عندي عشاء يوم التنين. عندي عشاء يوم التنين. Notice here, on Monday is translated in Arabic as the day of Monday. The day of Monday. يوم التنين. Another example, to say I have appointment on Monday. عندي موعد يوم التنين. Again, عندي موعد يوم التنين. Another example, to say I have an Arabic class on Monday. عندي درس عربي يوم التنين. Again, عندي درس عربي يوم التنين. Now, let's go to the second word, which is Tuesday. So, Tuesday in Arabic is Talata. Talata. Again, talata. Say it after me, please. Talata. Tamam. Now, to say on Tuesday, I have to say the day of Tuesday. Meaning, yom al talata. Yom al talata. Say it after me, please. Yom al talata. Tamam. Now, Let's have examples. To say, I have dinner on Tuesday. How would you say that? Tamam. عندي عشا يوم التلاتة. عندي عشا يوم التلاتة. Now repeat after me, please. عندي عشا يوم التلاتة. Tamam. Now, another example. To say, I have... Meeting on Tuesday. عندي اجتماع يوم التلاتة. Again. عندي اجتماع يوم التلاتة. Now repeat after me please. عندي اجتماع يوم التلاتة. To say for example, I have an Arabic class on Tuesday. عندي درس عربي يوم التلاتة. عندي درس عربي يوم التلاتة. Say it after me, please. عندي درس عربي يوم التلاتة. تمام. Now, to say, for example, I have work on Tuesday. عندي شغل يوم التلاتة. عندي شغل يوم التلاتة. Now, say it after me, please. عندي شغل يوم التلاتة. تمام. So let's sum up what we have learned in this video. So we learned the word Monday, which is تنين. We also learned how to say on Monday, which is the day of Monday, يوم التنين. And we also learned the word Tuesday, which is تلاتة. And to say on Tuesday, يوم التلاتة. 
And then we put these two words with some examples we have learned previously, like meeting, ishtima, mawaid, asha, dars arabi. Now make sure to repeat this video once or twice. Wa rah shufak al marajaye. Ma salami. الأرقام العربية Arabic numbers one واحد واحد Two, it name, it name, three, Tlati. Tlati Four Arbaa Arbaa Five خمسة خمسة six ستة ستة Seven Sabaa Sabaa Eight Tmani Tmani Nine Tisa Tisa Ten Ashara عشرة And today we are going to learn how to conjugate the verb to want in Arabic. So let's start. To say I want in Arabic, I say Biddi Biddi Now listen and repeat after me Bid D Bid D Biddi Mumtaz 
Notice here that we stressed on the letter DAL. So we say a D, a D. Now to say you want for a male in Arabic, I say Biddak. Biddak. Now listen and repeat after me. Bid Dak. Bid Dak. Bid Dak. Mumtaz. Now to say you want for a female in Arabic, I say Biddak. Biddak. Now listen and repeat after me. Bid Dak. Bid Dak. Bid Dak. Mumtaz. Now notice here the ending Ak when I say Bid Dak and the ending Ak when I say Bid Dak. So always the ending ak refer to a male gender and the ending ek refer to a female gender. Okay, now let's recap. To say I want in Arabic, I say biddi. And to say you want for a male, I say biddak. And to say you want for a female, I say biddak. So we have biddi, biddak, biddak. I hope you enjoyed the class today, guys, and I will see you next time. You take care. Hi, guys, this is Omar speaking, and today, guys, I want to teach you how to say I study in Arabic. Now, it's very simple. Idros. Idros. More time. Idros. Tamam. Let's have an example. I want to study Arabic. And this is a very important sentence. Uh, to say that, I say, Biddi idros Arabi. Again, Biddi idros Arabi. Tamam. Let's break it down. Biddi, I want. Idros, I study. Arabi, Arabic. Now here, try to pay attention to the way that you say ayn. Uh, ayn, it's a throat letter. So when we actually pronounce it or say it, we have stress on our throat. So, Arabi. Tamam? Okay, let's have one more example. I want to study French. That's easy. And to say that, Biddi idros Faransi. Again, Biddi idros Faransi. Faransi French. I hope guys uh, that was useful and until next time. Marhaba Shabab, it's Khalid here. Now in this video I'm going to teach you two important words that you must use when you go to an Arabic restaurant or shopping. Now these two words I'm about to teach you are going to make a great first impression on the native Arabic speaker. So stay tuned. Now the first word is Ya Ma'allim. Ya Ma'allim. Now let's break it down. Ma'allim means master of the craft. And Ya, it's just a tool that we use before the noun to call someone or to bring someone's attention to you, okay? So, ya ma'allim. Now, how can we use this phrase or word in a practical situation? Let's say now you are hungry and you want to eat in an Arabic restaurant and you went through the menu 
and now you would like to order. So you can say, يا معلم بدي أطلب لو سمحت. يا معلم بدي أطلب لو سمحت. Master of the craft, I would like to order, please. Now the second word is يا أبو الشباب. يا أبو الشباب. Now let's break it down. أبو means father. شباب means men or boys. أبو الشباب means the father of the men. And with the with the tool يا it becomes يا أبو الشباب. Now the way you use أبو الشباب is literally the same how we used uh, Ya Ma'allim. You can use them interchangeably, okay? So for example, let's say now you finished eating and you would like to um, order the bill. So you can say, Ya Abu Shabab, lahsab law samahat. Ya Abu Shabab, lahsab law samahat. Father of the men, the bill please. Now it's your turn to go to an Arabic restaurant and practice these two words. So if you live in London, I recommend you to go to an Ajwa Road and try one of their restaurants there. Uh, my favorite uh, three restaurants in London are so far Yalla Yalla, it's a Lebanese restaurant, and uh, Abu Zaid, it's a Syrian one. In fact, it's the only Syrian restaurant that I know in London. And, uh, and the food is very good actually, and decent prices. And the last one, it, it is called uh, Marouche. It's a Lebanese restaurant as well. So go to one of these restaurants and start by saying, Ya Ma'allim, biddi otlob law samahat. Master of the craft, I would like to order, please. And watch his impression. And then, after you finish your meal, say, Ya Abu Shabab, biddi lahsab law samahat. Father of the men, I would like the bill, please. And you are more likely to get a discount. Actually, many students of mine who study Arabic in London, they, when they go to an Arabic restaurant, they tend to, to have a discount all the time, up to 50%. So that's another reason for you why you should be studying Arabic. Hi guys, it's Omar speaking, and today I will teach you how to say free in Arabic, like I am free, okay? Mashi. Now, to say free, I say Fadi. Fadi. And this is for a man. Now, for a woman, I say Fadye. Fadye. So, what I did here, I added the ending Eh, to make Fadi feminine. Fadi, Fadie. Remember, the ending eh in Arabic refers to a feminine gender. So when you see a word ends uh, with eh, that means it's feminine. Okay? Tamam. Now, let's have an example. I am free today. Ana Fadi al -yom. Anna Fadi Aliyom. And this is for a man. Now for a woman, okay, can you actually try to say it? I will give you three seconds. One, two, three. Probably you did it correctly. So I'm free for a woman. I say Anna Fadie Aliyom. Anna Fadie Aliyom. Very simple.
Hi guys, this is Omar coming at you from uh, London, uh, Trafalgar Square. Uh, I'm now just uh, out doing some filming uh, for you guys. Um, you see how much I like you. And today I want to teach you how to say like tourist in Arabic. Okay, that's a very important word to learn. And uh, it's not that difficult to be honest. Okay, so let's learn it. So to say tourist, uh, I say saya. One more time. Saya. Thanks to uh, pay attention to you. Uh, the ha here is a throat letter. So when you say saya, you focus on your throat. So saya. Okay. And this is for a man. So if I want to say it for a woman, I would say saiha. Saiha. Uh, what I added is just ah in the end. So saiha. As you know already, if you watch my videos, so we add an end to make uh, adjectives and noun, nouns feminine. Okay? So let's recap. Sayah and Sayha. Okay? As you can see, this is a great place because uh, there are lots of uh, Sayah and Sayha in this place. That's why I want to teach it in this spot. Uh, so if you are in London and, uh, and you are visiting London or living in London, and you want to like say hello to some uh, sayah or sayha come here it's a good place to do that and yeah it'll be actually fun Hi guys, this is Omar speaking and today I want to talk about the first book I ever wrote in spoken Arabic. This is the book and I wrote this book with my brother Khalid. Um, that was like around now eight years ago when I was 22, 23. And the main reason why I wrote this book because I was really frustrated when I was teaching Arabic and uh, spoken Arabic at the beginning because I couldn't find any books explain the grammar and the rules for learning Levantine Arabic. So I dedicated lots of time and I did lots of research gathering all the rules and all the grammar I need to master teaching spoken Arabic. Then I put them in one book, this one. And I believe this is the first book was ever written uh, for like, you know, learning uh, the, grammars, uh, the grammar and the rules uh, in Levantine Arabic. Now, I want to talk about this book a little bit um, and one of my first sections in this book is section number two, which is uh, verb conjugations. Uh, I have conjugated over uh, 200 verbs uh, in spoken Arabic, so I put them in tables and patterns and you will find them very easy to follow and um, very simple as well. Also, one of my favorite section um, in this book is section number uh, one, which is explain the differences and the similarities between modern standard Arabic and spoken Arabic. So if you already like done some classes in modern standard Arabic, and then you want to switch to a dialect, you will find this very helpful. And uh, as soon as you read section one, you will have clarity about the differences and the similarities between the, the dialect and Morsan Arabic and you're going to use all your knowledge that you already uh, learned uh, from Morsan Arabic to learn spoken Arabic. Now if you want to buy this book uh, you can buy it as a PDF format or a hard copy uh, from you can buy it from our website or you can get it for free when you become a member in um, um, our online training program Nasra Arabic method and also you're going to get uh, a dictionary um, in spoken Arabic for free when you become a member. Now, I will put the links below. So if you want it, you can like, you know, just have a look and see if this is something useful for you. Uh, until next time. اليوم هو يوم اللغة العربية وحنا في السفارة البريطانية لدينا ناس كثير الذين يحبون اللغة العربية
أنا أخرب على الجيمة من السبخ وويا استكان شاي والمسكوف الدمار وبالمستقبل أريد أجرب الباتشا إن شاء الله مع السلامة The Nine Rules Rule number one, the definite article L. In Arabic, to make the noun definite, we add the definite article, which is a combination of Aleph plus Lam, and we pronounce it as L. Here are some examples. al bait al bait al bab al bab al maktab al maktab rule number 2 the arabic short vowels in arabic there are three short vowels and three long vowels the name of the short vowels are fatha dhamma and kasra now look at the chart below you will find fatha looks like a small dash and we pronounce it as an a uh, a uh, where dhamma looks like a small wow and we pronounce it u most of the time and o sometimes and finally kasra also looks like a small dash and we pronounce it as an E most of the time and A sometimes. Rule number three, the long vowels. Aleph, Wow, Ya have two functions. The first function is as a letters and the second as long vowels. Now have a look at the chart. As the long vowels, Aleph will sound like A, ah, long A. Ah. And Wow will have the sound U, long U. And Ya yeah will sound like E, long E. Now, as the letters, Aleph will sound like an Aleph, and Wow will be pronounced as a Wow, and Ya as a Ya. Now, notice the length of the long vowels are at least twice of the short vowels. Also, each of, each of the short vowels corresponds in sound to a long vowel. Rule number four, Sukun. This symbol called Sukun, which means silence. It's a circle shape that placed above a letter and it stops the pronunciation of that letter. Sukun appears above a letter not followed by a vowel. The symbol indicates the absence of a short vowel. Sukun can be only found at the middle or end of a word, but sometimes we may find it at the beginning of a word in spoken dialect. Listen to the pronunciation of these letters to see how Sukun works. Ibba, itta, na. Rule number five, Shadda. It's written above the consonant to make it double or give it an extra length. Instead of writing the letter twice in Arabic word, we add a Shadda to the consonant letter to make it double. Now look at the example here. Ba with Shadda equals Ba plus Ba. Now we can't write Shadda 
by itself, it always must be accompanied with Fatha, Dhamma or Kasra. Fatha and Dhamma are written above the Shadda and Kasra is written below the Shadda. Here are some examples. Ba Tu Inni Rule number six Alif Maqsura Alif Maqsura is only written in the final position and is pronounced as A long A Here are some examples Masha Masha to walk Haka Haka to speak Baka Baka to cry Rule number seven Al Hamza Hamza is a letter in the alphabet but it's not included in the twenty uh, letters eight letters its existence in the Arabic script goes back to the historical reasons so we have two types of Hamza Hamzat al-Qata and Hamzat al-Wasl Hamzat al-Qata the Hamza may appear anywhere in the world it's found written most of the time on a alif or waw sometimes it may appear on the line as well now look at the chart and you will see Hamza written Alif or Wow or Alif Maqsura or on the line and we pronounce it sometimes A and sometimes U an example for that Udrus I study Uktub I write Now Hamza al-Wasl, it's usually indicates by a regular alif without a Hamza and it occurs only at the beginning of a word. Istamil, I use. Isma, I listen. Ahki, I speak. Rule number eight. How to say and write no in Arabic? Basically, it's a combination of lam plus alif equals this shape. La. An example for that? La shukran. No thanks. La shukran. No thanks. Rule number nine. Alta al marbuta. To form a feminine word from the masculine in Arabic, we simply add ta marbuta at the end of a word which looks like a circle with two dots or a head with two dots above depending on the word uh, it's connected to usually for animals, humans and professions now here are some examples tawle table adime old Muhandise, female engineer. Basically, the reason why it's so difficult to learn this language online is that when you're starting out, you need to make a decision. You will either be studying Fusha or Modern Standard Arabic, which is the language of the news and general media, or you will learn a dialect, which is how people speak on a day-to-day -day basis. Unfortunately, you can't really mix and match. You can't learn this in Egyptian Arabic and this in Fusha and this in Levantine. So yeah, to make things easier on myself and to avoid any like needless issues, I went with an in-person approach. During my class, we used a textbook that I'd be very happy to recommend. It's called Syrian Colloquial Arabic. And there is another resource, which is actually online. And it is the best one that I've been able to find. It's called the Nasra Arabic Method. And it specializes specifically in spoken Levantine Arabic, which I found very helpful. It costs about 29, not about, it costs exactly $29 per month. Sabi what? 
Sabi what? Sabi na mine. Aywa. Samar Rahru Rahru Truh Al-Oxford Aishu Hello. A family. I'll do. مرحبا. اليوم هو يوم اللغة العربية. وحنا في السفارة البريطانية لدينا ناس كتير الذين يحبون اللغة العربية. أنا أخرب على الجيمة من الصباح وويا استكان شاي. والمسكوف الدمار. وبالمستقبل أريد أجرب الباتشا إن شاء الله مع السلامة مرحبا يا شباب. So today we're going to do a new verb, and this verb is very important. The verb is to go. So we are going to conjugate it in I, Anna, and then he, Hue. And then she here. Okay. Yalla. So to say I go, I say ruh. Ruh. Now notice in the end there is number seven, which is refers to uh, a letter, throat letter in Arabic, which is ha. Because we added this number, because in English we don't have this sound. So whenever you see this written uh, in text with your friends, remember that it's represent ha. Okay, so ruh, I go. So Anna Ruh. He goes. Now he goes E Ruh. Basically what we added E plus Ruh. E Ruh. So E Ruh means he goes. It ruh. It ruh. She goes. So what we added here is it plus ruh. So it ruh. Okay. So this is. Um, different from the verbs we learned previously which is I want and I have uh, because I want and I have are actually uh, not regular verbs so they have a specific way of conjugation but this is the verb to go and from now on most of the verbs gonna follow this rules okay so let's do an example. How can I say I want to go to the office and he wants to go to the museum? Biddi ruh al maktab. 
وبده يروح على المتحف Okay, again, biddi, which means I want, ruh, I go, a means to, al, the, maktab, office, wa biddo, so he wants, i ruh, he goes, a, to, al, mathaf. Museum. So, here uh, very important uh, to pay attention to a and al because both represent to the. Now I said it slowly, but the truth is we say it together. We blend it. So it will be actually al to the. So now if we say the sentence again with a, with a normal normal speed بدي روح على المكتب وبدو يروح على المتحف So متحف Museum, mat, half. One more time. بدي روح على المكتب وبدو يروح على المتحف. ممتاز. Now let's move to a new example. She wants to go to the hospital. Because she is sick. So how can you say that? Bidda itruh al mustashfa. Mishan hiye marida. So here mustashfa means hospital. Mishan because Mishan and hiye she marida sick. So again. بدها تروح على المستشفى مشان هي مريضة. There's something very important here. Uh, in Arabic, we actually stack verbs. So if you if we translate this word by word, will be I want, I go to the hospital because she sick. Also, we don't have the verb is am um, are in Arabic at all. Okay. Uh, he represent she. He marida. And notice in the end, marida ends with a, and that refers to a feminine. Okay. Uh, sometimes you will see also a and h the same. Now, if we if we uh, take this off, it would be masculine. So, if you want to say sick for a person, it's masculine, or to a man. It will be marid, marid, and then for a feminine, fe feminine, marida. Mumtaz. Now let's recap. So far, we learned how to say, "Ruh, I go. He goes, I ruh. She goes, it ruh." The main vocab, Mathaf, museum. 
مريضة sick هي she now I added هو in the end so هو means he I just want to pay attention because we are doing now writing uh, in phonetic way, the Arabic. Now, these rules are can be changed. So it depends on also your language. You can be French, you can be Italian. Uh, this is usually the standard, but feel free to change it because we don't have standard rules for phonetic because usually we should do it all in Arabic. Uh, but in this section, we are making more, we're just paying attention to the speaking, improving your speed and your vocab. <laughs>